home. Welcome once again and thank you for joining us this morning on Sunrise at Sea. My name is Shivan and the conversation around uniting Muslim factions continues here on the Twitter jabs. And just to still give you an insight, and earlier on I know I mentioned this, but if you're just joining us, it's very important that I put context to this story. Now, in this particular event, the President of Uganda, that is His Excellency Yori Kaguta Museveni, on the 12th of April, met with a group of Muslim leaders that was at State House in Tebet to report to him about a success in a reconciliation effort that has been ongoing for over five years. Now, among the leaders that met with the president were those from Old Kampala, Nakasero, and some former leaders of Chibuli. Now, the delegation that was headed by the Mufti of Uganda, that is Sheikh Shaban Ramadan, was at State House to brief the president about the agreement reached between the factions during the factions and uniting the body. Now, of course, looking at where all this comes from, according to Sheikh Mubaje, they had already signed an uh, signed a unity agreement between the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, the Chivuli group, together with the Nakasero group to unite as one body following the years of disagreement that was between the various factions that was sparked off by the sale of Muslim properties to businessman Drake Lubega. But we do have a report that was published from our PM edition that we would like you to have a look at. On Tuesday, a section of Muslim clerics at different levels headed by the Uganda Mufti Sheikh Shaban Ramadan Mubaji, head of the Tablik sect, Amil Umar Sheikh Muhammad Yunus Kamoga, former Supreme Mufti Sheikh Suleiman Kasule Ndirangwa, and Sheikh Obed Kamlegea met with President Yuri Kagutam 7 to present their reconciliation agreement. <laughs> These tabled what they had agreed upon in the reconciliation agreement, which had stalled for decades. President Museveni applauded them for the milestone achieved and pledged to support them at all levels of development. But the developments have not pleased leaders at Kibuli Mosque. The Director of Communication and International Relations, Dr. Muhammad Chigundu, says those who claim to have represented the Chibuli site do not belong to the current leadership. That the office of the Supreme Mufti was neither invited nor involved in the purported unity talks. We, therefore, in the strongest terms possible, refute the impression created that Sheikh Siliman Kasule Ndirangwa, Sheikh Mahmoud Sebugwao Chibate, Sheikh Abdulobeid Kamlegea, and Sheikh Hamid Katerega, that, have, that they have the mandate to represent or speak for the office of the Supreme Mufti. And they are not, we reiterate, and they are not part of the administration of the office of the Supreme Mufti. He confirmed open engagements toward reconciliation, but must be followed in the right procedures. Well, you have heard the story from the horse's mouth, and actually those were some of the mixed reactions that were received after the president met with some leaders of the Muslim fraternity. However, to weigh in on this conversation, I am joined by Sheikh Ashraf at Sheikh Sheikh Ashraf Mutagubia. I hope I got his name right. I've been practicing his name. Good morning, Sheikh Ashraf. Good morning. And thank Good you so morning, much for Shabak. joining me thank this you. morning on Sunrise at Sea to discuss issues in regard to uniting Muslim factions. It's an honor. Okay. An honor. So first things first, how many Muslim factions do we have in Uganda? Well, that is uh, a good question, Shivan. Uh, good morning to everyone. So 
We have three, I would say, most recognized or largest okay. uh, sects in Uganda. But there are other sects. However, most of these sects affiliate to these three as well. So we have the Jamaiyat Dawa or the Tablig community at Nakasero. And we have uh, Chiburi. And you know, uh, the, that place of the Prince Nachibing and that house. And we have the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, where the head is the Mufti, Sheikh Shaban Ramadan Mubaji. So we have other sects like the Spidika. These, these, these were initially part of the Tablir, and then they formed their own uh, leadership. But most of their values, uh, like I, I, I would say, they are not so different from the Tablir. Okay. And then we have the Bukoto Natete and then we have the Juman Zukuri in Kawempe. Now these ones, most of them would uh, affiliate themselves with uh, the Chiburi sect. So we have different uh, leaderships. This is what I can say about that. However, these three sects met some time back. We, we, we've ever been, to, I mean, united as Muslims. Uh, I'm using the word united even though I don't believe in it. <laughs> Interesting, okay. <laughs> because I don't believe that we are disunited personally, and I think I'll get a chance to talk about that. Yes. We're just being diverse. Diversity is not a bad thing, but, and when we talk about diversity, we then talk about the etiquettes of diversity, the tolerance and coexistence. I don't think it is in the Muslims' uh, interest to unite, quote-unquote because that would again suffocate many voices and we don't want that in a democracy. Okay, so what are your thoughts on the reconciliation of all Muslim factions? I know you highlighted a bit of it, but break it down for us. Do you want me to talk about what, what just happened or yes. the reconciliation, if it would happen, it would be good. You know, Shivan, these things are complex. They are older than us. The differences that we are seeing right now are very old. They are not 30 years old. Okay. They are very old. And the president knows that. So we are looking at something that has been happening time and again in history. And it has not been achieved except at the uh, President Idamin's regime. This is when he forcefully made Muslims unite under the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. But did not work because reconciliation and that kind of unity has to come willingly. You can't force it on someone. Okay? So reconciling as, as an alternative dispute resolution, it has rules. So we need to look at, first of all, the representation, where all Muslim sects represented. What were the grievances before? And now what has been agreed upon by all sects? We need to look at those documents because the question is, what next? Yes, we have seen uh, this uh, wonderful gesture like you have highlighted on the news in, the, in, in our report, but what next then? Do we now become one group? And if we're remaining in our individual or separate groups, then what are the terms of what? The reference, how are you going to be operating together? And what should this unity mean? What are, we now going, what are we now going to achieve that we were not achieving before? Now these questions need to come because while we have leaders reconciling, we need to understand that there are over six million Muslims in Uganda. Yes. How sure are we that they were represented? Many Muslims were not part of the, 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 the Rangos anyway. Because that representation might send a picture that all Muslims belong to these sects, and it's not right. So in other words, are you trying to say that some of the Muslim leaders that went ahead to meet the President of Uganda, that is His Excellency Yorek Oguta Museveni, that was on the 12th of April, do you think they did it the right way in your capacity? Well, right or wrong will, will definitely depend. Okay. I mean, if there is a sect which wants to unite and maybe have some bit of a memorandum of understanding with another sect, that's okay. But to portray it as a representation of all Muslims, 
I think that's not fair. Okay. Because uh, in a democracy, all you can do is negotiate. So these two negotiated, and they thought they could work together on particular things, and they achieved that. But now, representing us all, I don't think that was fair. Because mm -hmm. they are, uh, immediately after they did that, the sign that they did not represent all the Muslims came up. You saw what uh, the Office of the Supreme of Church actually did. So in your regard, what should have been done in the first place? In, in regard to what? In, in regard to the reconciliation plans and the I need to understand what, 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 what is meant by reconciliation here. I need to understand why we think we are not united. You know, Shivan, there is something we need to understand. In, in a democracy, you need to understand that there is freedom of assembly and association. Yes. This is the nation we are living. Right now, Ashraf Mutaguya can start a sect. And I can get a number of Muslims to follow me. So, at a political level, a leadership level, we shall always have all these different ones because the constitution provides for that. So what do you call reconciliation? Is it all of us coming together to form one body? Or we just need one spring? Because I would advocate that we have a joint Sunni Muslim uh, council. Maybe here all of us can meet and have our voices uh, united, but each group stays where they are. So, Islam as a religion is very democratic. It does not in this, uh, uh, like, like the Uganda we are living right now, and the state of uh, the nation, maybe politically, and the systems, the philosophies our, our state is following. Islam does not mandate you to belong to a specific group. And it is clear in all the Islamic literature and scholarly work. Okay. We are <clears throat> united because we all say there is none that should be worshipped but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad is what? Is the Prophet, the last Prophet. Now here we are united. Now the scholarly work, whether, it, whether in matters of jurisprudence or creed or ethics and morality issues, we can differ. We have differences of opinion and scholars demonstrated that very well. And also, these sects in Uganda belong to different and subscribe to different ideologies. It is all Islam, but the, some of them have a very strong disagreement with the other in terms of creed. And others in terms of ethical and morality issues. So these ideologies are the ones driving these sects. Now, you cannot unite them, and you cannot reconcile why? Because you believe in something and I believe in something else. So we shall not right now preach unity because it is not achievable and I don't think it is in our interest. But we can preach principles of coexistence and tolerance. Then we should also clearly demarcate and identify what unites us all in Uganda given the context we are living. And when should we come together to advocate for Muslims in general? Okay. Not becoming one group, and I, the, the whole idea of sending a message to the subconscious of most Muslims and non-Muslims alike, I believe, Shivan, you believe Muslims are very disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we, we, I mean, this message is being sent to the subconscious of many Ugandans that Muslims are disunited. We are not disunited. We are diverse. So, because from, from what I'm picking from your submissions and the different things that you've actually aired out, you have clearly highlighted and re-emphasized that there is no issue of disunity. It's just an issue of diverse, it's diversification. It's an issue of different ideologies. You can't all fall under one thing. We, 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 we just need, you know, what we're talking about is leadership. Okay. And definitely there is politics behind. Now, in a democracy, this is not uh, a monarchy. Because in the traditional, classical Islamic leadership, the president must be the leader of Muslims. So here, after having and declaring the president as the leader of the Muslim state, then there is nothing like factions. But under a democracy, where the president is not Muslim, and we are living different religious denominations, yes. where there is freedom of assembly and association, you cannot start advocating for unity, for a group as diverse as Muslims to become one group. They are one group because they subscribe to Islam. 
But in terms of operating and, and, and how do we now practice our religion, we shall definitely follow different sheikhs, different sects. But we all need to remember that we are all Muslims. And we need to be talking about tolerance. How do you handle the difference? Now, this whole unity thing diverts all our attention from what matters. What matters is how are Muslims doing financially? And how, we can, how can we advocate for community development? We need to look at education. If every sect had good governance principles, every sect would achieve and the Muslim community would be achieving. And I don't think that it is so hard for the government to, to, to deal with us as Muslims in terms of help. Because we are not so many and we are not so many sects. But because of that lack of good governance, this is where we should be focusing. Every member of a specific sect should be uh, advocating for good governance. We need transparency in every sect. If every sect was, could do what they had to do, Muslims would develop. But now when we advocate for an impossible goal, this is very impossible to achieve and I don't want really this generation of youth to spend the next 30 years trying to achieve it. So, so in your opinion, and I know you highlighted in regard to some political affiliations, do you think that there is some politics beneath this particular... There is world? always politics and economics. That is what the world Please we are living. Please <laughs> explain. <laughs> Shivan, um, A moment of silence. You're asking a very difficult question, but very, very pertinent. There is always politics and economics. First of all, uh, we do not know what led to that meeting. What we know is what the media helped us understand, but there is always another story behind. It could be political, it could be economic. Okay. I cannot stress that point more, but there is always that. It is happening. Okay, so moving on, what are your thoughts on the Chibuli group uh, that decided or that refuted this meeting and excluded its involvement? Well, it was excluded before this meeting. They just, want, they just wanted to display their uh, independence they had to make it clear to their followers that we are not part of that because they, serve, they are loyal to their followers. So they had to make a statement and I thought that was very diplomatic. Okay. Their statement was clear. Dr. Chigundu made it clear that uh, we were not invited and we do not know of this meeting. So the outcomes cannot really concern us and we want to make it clear that we are not part of that. Okay, some people would subscribe to the thought and still you mentioned it and said because this shows a message or brings out the idea that Muslims are disunited or are very disorganized <laughs> and yet that might not be the case. However, so people would ask why, is it, why does it seem so hard that Muslims cannot come to one consensus, cannot agree to one thing? Because it is an impossible goal to achieve in a democracy. We need to set another agenda, another goal of tolerance and coexistence. We need to respect each other's uh, systems. We need to work on good governance in every sect. We need to be asking every sect, what is your work plan? What is your strategic plan? We need to be asking these questions. Are you following your constitution? We can maybe set up uh, a commission. If, if we were to ask the government to do that, we can set up a commission, or in this case, uh, a council that can monitor all sects. Maybe that, that where every sect is represented. And also to say, that you have represented all Muslims. There are people who we do not, some of us don't believe are Muslims, but they call themselves Muslims. In Uganda, because it is a democracy, we have the uh, certain sects I will not mention. Okay. So when you say that Muslims have united, what do you mean? So it's clearly uh, not take is, taking us anywhere. And why it is not taking us anywhere is because, in my opinion, Shivan, it yes. is not a goal that can be achieved now. Not in this lifetime where we are. Maybe later. But right now, when all the Muslims are being groomed by the schools which are under the democracy, it means that everyone is entitled to their right, rights of speech, freedom of association and assembly. 
This and is where opinion. Muslims mm. and opinion. So you cannot force and Islam itself. You need to understand Shiva. We do not have a supreme leader. Islam would give you leadership based on the context you're living, the situation, time and space where you are. Okay. There is nothing like that. We all follow Saudi or Iran or uh, Dubai and UAE. No. We are independent Muslims in Uganda. Actually, if Saudi issues a fatwa or a judicial ruling or something like that, our scholars can refute it. And you're not supposed to take it if you don't want it. So this is how democratic the religion is. You say something, I don't believe in it. I ask my sheikh who I believe in. And then he tells me something different. I'll go with my sheikh. It doesn't matter if you... But, but the whole idea is that we are not disunited. We are diverse. And we need to understand where Uganda stands. Uganda is a nation of many tribes. And that always comes to play. Like it or not. The freedoms of assembly and association. And then the politics of, politics of tribes. Always has to come to play in Uganda. You saw after the elections, the comments were made that Uganda elected someone. You, I mean, you, 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 you saw when uh, the late Jacob Olanya passed on. The politics of tribes again came up. So that is where Uganda stands and we need to understand where we are. The dream of having Muslims united, the dream of having an Islamic state within a democracy where there is Shivan who is Christian, I would, I would suppose, is, 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 is not a very practical, achievable goal. It's the ideal, but it's not the reality. And, and of course, that is what religion is. Religion is ideal, so we strive to get there, but we never get there. No one ever gets it right. We just have to have some bit of embodiment of that ideal. Right now, Muslims should be focusing on strengthening these sects. We should demand for good governance. Where is the constitution? Are we following it? What did we do this year? We need to be held accountable, but confusing the whole Muslim community by pointing it to such a very, very diversionary, uh, I say, stunt. Because it's not, it's, it's not any, any real. And I can tell you that there are many Muslims, many sheikhs I know that do not subscribe to any of the sects. You can't say that they are now united with you. So, as we wrap up the conversation, I know you've mentioned issues of diversification, you've mentioned issues, whether it's an issue of diversification or an issue in regard to unity, my question would be, regardless of what it is, don't you think the right thing would have been to settle this amongst the Muslim fraternities instead of involving central government? I have a problem with settling this. Settling what? So, in, in other words, black, black and white, there is actually nothing to be settled. We should outline what should be settled. I, I do not believe in this general impression being created that as if we are so disunited in everything. Muslims pray in every mosque you find. We do not have memberships at mosques. And, I, and what I know is that we pray in the same mosques. Okay. We pray the same way. We go to the same schools. The Chivuli sect has schools and I believe even the Tablig community members have ch children there studying. Now we have bigger problems like the financial solution. You know Muslims are not in banks. Muslim, Muslims are not in microfinance or circles. Why? Because all the sects, it is prohibited for us, as, uh, to us as Muslims to subscribe to anything called riba or interest. Now this is where we should be focusing as sects. How do we seed to generate a financial solution? that conforms to the Islamic law. How do we push for this? We have an issue of the Qadi courts, the Muslim family law. Muslims, you know, we are guided in, in family and whatever, we, we, we can marry more than one. I don't know I saw your, your uh, side cheek conversation with, <laughs> <laughs> with the ladies here. Yeah? And I saw all these different, I, I think Sarah was like, I'm polygamous. And someone was like, no, I'm not polygamous. So Muslims are polygamous because uh, Islam accepts that and allows for that to happen. So we have our own family law, inheritance and all that. The constitution provides that we shall be able as Muslims to follow the Islamic law in that regard. 
Now, we have not been successful at that. Why? Because the, the courts have not yet been established. Now, whether you're in Chivuli or Old Kampala or Tablig or wherever, this is the law that governs you and it's not achieved. So we should be looking at this. If every sect could push to have a directorate of Sharia and legal affairs, a functional one in every sect to help Muslims resolve and settle their family disputes, would be somewhere. Finance, if every Muslim sect could also form some financial solution, a circle, a microfinance or something, then we would be functioning. We can have many banks on Kampala Road and every bank has its followers and you can be in both. You can have an account in Stambik and in Equity yes. Bank. So we can work on things that will help develop the Muslim community either by focusing on every sect delivering what they promise or by I, I'm selling this idea of forming a joint Sunni, and I emphasize that, Sunni Muslim Council, where all sects are represented and we agree on what should that council do exactly. Okay. But the idea of portraying Muslims are not, as not united, we are, are united. And you will see when something happens to a Muslim, the whole state stands. What, what are you doing to the Muslims? No one asks about the sect. So if a sheikh is killed, for example, in cold blood, we all say something. If we uh, want to advocate for a financial solution, they say we all stand up. So we are united you know, in that which is achievable. But okay. in terms of ideology, I don't believe we are disunited. We are diverse, and that should be respected. And that should mean that our focus now should be on uh, values of tolerance and coexistence and uh, uh, constructive dialogue. Okay, so some people felt that, and even looking at the reason as to why some of the leaders met with the president, some people actually on Twitter and even people over felt that there was, it was sort of like seeking approval from the president. What are your sentiments or opinions on this? Approval of what? Approval of what? I mean, <laughs> I, I, think, I think we need longer sessions to explain how Islam works, especially on a political level leadership level. Okay. It is called a siyasa sharia. It is, it is a field in the Islamic jurisprudence. And then we need to understand the politics of the state. Now, approval of what? Like I said, I don't know why they went. And I'm not condemning actually, personally. They, what, I'm sure they got what they wanted. And as Ugandan citizens, they have the right to do that. But what they do not have the right to do is to, to, to mark that as a representation of all Muslims, that is suffocating six million plus Muslims' voices, and I do not subscribe to such an idea. Let all Muslims think the way they want to think. Because Muslims, while we are talking about Islam, they are Ugandans. They are supposed to be participating in, in the national development programs. So if, if, if every sect could do that, Uganda would be somewhere. Okay. We, we just need to understand <coughs> that, and I don't believe we are dismayed, we are diverse, but I agree that we need to change the language we are using. Yes, someone wronged us, someone did that, of course there were some wrongs, because the other sect touched a property, for example, that all Muslims believed it was theirs. Now this was a property of Muslims, now we are united. We can unite in protecting property, so we, we have good policies in every sect, to preserve the property of Muslims. That can unite us. But also, uh, what happened was, uh, it is a good thing that two sects are, it is, it is usually a good thing, whether it is uh, uh, an international law issue, if we can have the East African state and have Congo be part of us, it is a good thing, right? But you cannot start condemning Chad for not joining you, Ethiopia, or Somalia, Botswana, you can't. All you can do is advocate and negotiate because it is good to be together. Now, if they formed an alliance, that's good. Then they should deliver. Because what matters is not that leadership, uh, uh, I, I say not the leadership level, but what does the ordinary Muslim benefit after COVID? We are all impoverished. Our, our kids are not going to school. Our imams are not anywhere in a good condition. 
So the problems of the imams in the Tablik sector are the problems of the imams in uh, Old Kampala and Chivoli. I mean, we have issues to work on. We cannot keep on wasting our time talking about something that cannot be achieved. I've told you we're in a democracy, Shiva. I can start a sect right now and no one can tell me anything. And maybe the president will also recognize me and give me a car because I'm a leader now. Okay. So, and Islam is a democracy. We cannot unite all of them in that sense that people are talking about. Let every sect do what they are going to do. We want to hold them accountable, Shivan. So they should not uh, really uh, kind of make us busy. Okay. So, Sheikh, as we wrap up the conversation, your last remarks, and also do you think that this uh, reconciliation move will bear any good fruit, of course, together with your last remarks? Well, the reconciliation move will do its, what it's supposed to do, I should say. So if these people, alhamdulillah, agreed, thanks to God, let them deliver now. Okay. We are past that. You, you, you can uh, show us the terms, uh, how the reconciliation process went, because this is law. This is law. Alternative dispute resolution and reconciliation is one of them. So let us follow the right lords and let us now move and let us work. We need to deliver service services to the Muslim, uh, ordinary Muslim. Now, those who did not subscribe to this idea, I would say that we need tolerance. If the other groups are reconciled and you're not part of them, we shall keep on f uh, preaching tolerance, coexistence, and mutual respect. And also, you serve in your best capacity. So my final remarks, especially to the Muslim generation and the Muslim youths, you know Ugandans are uh, majority are youths. The idea that we are not united needs to be checked. Trying to suffocate all Muslim voices and make them one voice is not right. In a democracy, the opposition and the government and everyone, we, everyone keeps the other in check. So if you bribe one sect, another sect will not be bribed. So we are saved. Because there is no supreme leader above there. So all we can do is advocate for tolerance, coexistence, and this discipline of having mutual respect and improve on our dialogue. Then probably we can form a joint Sunni Muslim Council, which should voice out the concerns of all Muslims. Okay. That is what I can say. Okay, thank you so much, Sheikh, for your time this morning on You're Sunrise at Sea. Well, that wraps up the conversation that I had for you this morning on the Twitter jobs. However, stay tuned because up next is beauty, wellness, and lifestyle. In particular, we talk the aspect of beauty. And today we are going to be looking at what a facial looks like. In short, a day at the spa. Keep watching Sunrise at Sea.